part two of our corporate nine and a quarter disassembly. Uh, what we're going to be doing is removing bearings today. And first we're going to start with the axle bearings right here. I have a tool. This is our tool to remove the axle bearings. This is a slide hammer. What I need to do first is fit this tool in behind the axle bearing. What I didn't show you was there was an axle seal and we previously removed the axle seals. If you try and remove the bearing with the axle seal still in there, you're going to have a hard time. I recommend removing the axle seal first. Now all we need to do is take our slide hammer. do the same thing on the other side, then we're going to move in and push the races out of the housing. All right. We drove out, or we pulled out both axle bearings. Now we're going to drive the races out of the housing. So, if you look right here, we can see the, the inner race for the pinion, the outer race is right here. I'm going to take this punch and drive the outer race that direction and drive it out of the housing. And we'll go around to the inside and drive this inner race this direction and drive it out of the housing. So, outer race is out. Now we need to come around the other side. We're going to do the same thing and drive the inner race out this direction. All right. We've got our pinion out. We've got a differential and a ring gear out. What we're going to do now is press this bearing off the pinion. We're not going to be reusing the bearing. We're going to be replacing the pinion. The reason we're taking this apart is there's a shim underneath of this bearing that we want to reuse. Uh, I have a bearing splitter. It's mounted up on this bearing right here. We're going to press down on the pinion and try and lift the bearing off the pinion. We don't have high hopes that this is going to be successful. I think there's a really strong chance that the cage is going to be blown apart. If that happens, it's not a big deal. That's just the first part in getting this race off. Let's see what happens when we press on the pinion. If you're going to be reusing your pinion, okay, it's important that you put something underneath the pinion to catch it. You don't let it hit the floor. This one's junk, so we don't have to worry about breaking teeth off. got the bearing off. This is the shim that we're after right here. We're actually going to be replacing this bearing. It's got some damage. You can see the, the teeth on the gear broke and they probably went around and, and met these rollers on the pinion bearing. This isn't going to work for us. So we have our shim off. Now we're going to move on to the side bearings on the differential. We just finished pressing the bearing off of our pinion. Now we're getting ready to remove the side bearings on our differential. Before I go ahead and take the side bearings off, I'm going to remove the ring gear from the differential just to lighten it up so we're not carrying around a heavy differential. Uh, one of the things to pay attention for on differentials, sometimes the ring gear bolts have left hand threads. This nine and a quarter has left hand thread bolts that hold the, the ring gear on. They're also stamped L. The L indicates that it has left hand threads. So it's righty loosey, not righty tight. Loosened all the bolts. I'm gonna get a hammer and tap the ring gear down a little bit. And cut. Ready to take this differential side bearing off. One option is we can use this bearing splitter, put it around the bearing, and put it in the press. Unfortunately, because of the width of the differential, this doesn't fit in our press. The 
there is a special tool used to pull uh, side bearings. Um, we haven't been successfully using this tool on uh, this particular side bearing. What I want to show you is a way that we can take press fit bearings off of a shaft if we're having a hard time with the pull or even the bearing splitter because the inner race doesn't give us enough area to hang on to. It's a really simple process. What we're going to do is cut the cage off. The cage holds the rollers in place. We're going to put a cut on the inner race. We're going to fracture it with a chisel and then pull it off. You're probably going to see it in high speed here in a second, but you'll get the idea when you see it happen. Cut the, the cage. The cage is what holds the rollers in place. So, pull the cage off, we lose all those rollers. Now we're left with the inner race. Um, the reason this is so difficult to get off, if you look in here, there's just not much of a ledge to go ahead and, and grab the inner race. We could take the cutoff wheel and cut a small tab that we could fit our puller feet under. It's just as easy to make a slice on the inner race and relieve the tension of the bearing around the differential. That's what we're going to do now. All right. You can, you can see the area that we've scored around the inner race here. What I'm gonna do is take a chisel and stick it in that score that travels around the race. I'm gonna tap it. That's gonna help fracture that inner race and relieve the tension on it. Now, if I just give it a little tap, because there's no tension, this this race will slide right off. Anytime you have a tapered roller bearing that's a press fit on a shaft and you can't get it off with a bearing spitter or a puller, this is an option to remove it. That was the bearing removal portion of our nine and a quarter corporate rear rebuild. Uh, stay tuned, the next part's gonna be installing all these bearings that we just removed. We removed axle bearings, we removed pinion races from the case, and we removed 